I'm sure if you're an Oldham Athletic fan, you remember the 2012-13 team who did so well in the FA Cup. But do any of you know what they're actually doing nowadays? Hello and welcome to a new video on the Blue and White Army YouTube channel. Now, as I said before, I am going to go over the 2012-13 team and just really see what they're doing now. So here's just a, a quick recap of who the players are. There'll just be a list on the screen somewhere. And I'm just going to take out the ones who've retired from that who aren't playing. Now, out of them, there are two who I think kind of stand out. Now, it's Rhys Wabara, who has gone to create his own uh, designer clothing business instead of doing football. Manier Devoir, uh, that's what Rhys Wabara has dedicated his life to now, instead of being England under 23. And it's getting about a million quid a week in turnover from all the articles I read, which I think is actually quite decent. Don't know how much money he's on, but it's a lot. Now, the other one who stood out to me is Dan Taylor. That is because I could not find a single bit of information about him anywhere. From the looks of it, he was last playing at Spennymore Town, but there's nothing since that, and he seems to have, like, left there in 2015, so he's probably not playing football anymore. That's what I presumed. There was nothing anywhere, not on his Wikipedia, What's on the Spending More Town page, there was nothing about it. If anyone knows, please comment it down below. We have a number of players who've gone into non-league. In step one of non-league, we have Connor Brown. He is at Barrow, the same club that Brian Wilson's at. So they've got a pretty ex Oldham team. And I hope that uh, I hope that Brian and Connor aren't fighting for places and can do really well. But you have to go down another level to find one of the most capped Oldham players in really recent history. That's James Wesloski. He is at Nuneaton Borough, so the uh, fifth, no, sixth tier of English football, sorry. It's not that bad, I guess, but it could be worse. Mm. To find your other non-league players, you have to go all the way down to the eighth tier. Now, Chris Sutherland is at Hyde United, which is a very local club to us. The only other one in the eighth tier is Lee Barnard, who's playing for Malden and Tiptree in one of the Ishmian leagues. Now, I don't know much about um, very low-league Southern football, but if anyone does, then uh, just comment down below what are Molden and Tiptree like. They're a decent side. Because Lee Barnard seems to have had an okay career, you know, before he uh, made the step down that far into non-league. Now, except from Jose Baxter, of course, who we all know is in League 2 with Oldham, there are three others who are down there. That is Carl Winchester, to start off, who is at Forest Green Rovers. Um, yeah, he kind of tore us apart at that away game. Mm, it's not hard to tear us apart when we have a 4 5 1 with Oak Grady up front, is it? And you also have Christian Montano, who uh, didn't leave on the best of terms, did he? And then you have Robbie Simpson, who didn't tear us apart uh, at the game against MK Dons. Um, he, he was okay. No one near as good as he was when he used to play for Oldham, though. Now, the next three are all in the championship, and that is Jonathan Grounds. Matt Smith and Jordan Abita. Now, Abita is playing at Reading right now, which is, you know, pretty far down south club. And, you know, well done for him. He looked decent when he was at Oldham. Uh, but also down south, you have Matt Smith at QPR. He was at Fulham previously. He doesn't seem to have been scoring a lot of goals, but somehow he's kept himself in the championship. Don't know how he has. And Jonathan Grounds has been at Birmingham City for absolutely years. And he is this season on loan at Bolton Wanderers. You probably uh, see him in some of Stumpeg or Fogden's vlogs if you watch them. Now, only one player is in the Premier League. And I think it's the only Oldham player for ages to be in the Premier League. And that's James Tarkowski at Burnley. Now, he's played his fair share of uh, Europa League games against, well, uh, Aberdeen, Istanbul, Basahexe. And Olympiacos, sadly, Burnley didn't make it through to the Europa League. But you know what? It's not that bad for him, is it? He's also played for England, just missed out on being in the World Cup side. But there are a few Oldham players who've actually gone much further in European competition. Now, we go to Matt Derbyshire, who's playing in Cyprus, playing in Nicosia, to be uh, more exact. And he scored in the Europa League, albeit against a side from Azerbaijan. But... He still scored. I don't know of a single Oldham player previously to have then gone ahead and scored in a Euro European competition. There were probably some in the 90s who, let's say, you know, went to your likes of Man United and stuff and ended up playing. But if you do know, then uh, 
I've asked people to comment down below too many times. I should probably do my own research. Now, there is one who has gone even further and has played in the Champions League. That's Kirk Miller. He was just a bit of a youth prospect at Oldham, sometimes got subbed on. That's why he left. He went for Linfield FC in his home country of Northern Ireland in Belfast. Now, Linfield are a pretty... Uh, they're known for being a Protestant club. And they were even banned for quite a while, if I remember rightly, or banned for their stadium in Belfast in their early existence because of that. So, if you are the most Protestant clubs, you know what, it's really good for UEFA to draw. They drew them against Celtic. Yeah, Kirk Miller played in the Champions League at Celtic Park against Celtic, albeit it was a 4-0 loss. It was a very heated game off the pitch. On the pitch, Celtic, it was a complete walkover. But still, to be able to play at that sort of level against some pretty good players, that's so good for someone like Kurt Miller, who wasn't the best in the world when he was at Oldham. He's also played in the Europa League. Now, he's played against NSI Runovic, I think I'm saying that correctly, uh, in which they won 2-0. And he's also played against Cork City, which they won one of the games and they lost the other one. And, you know, once again, like Matt Derbyshire, they didn't go forward to the next round of the Europa League. There are two more Oldham players who are playing abroad. Let's start off with our captain, Dean Furman. Now, he is playing at Supersport in South Africa. Once again, his native country. And, sadly, he's out injured for quite a while. I think it's over a year. Whether he actually goes back to playing football, I don't know. There's one other who I seem to have packed multiple times on FIFA already this year, and that's Yusuf Machangama. Now, he is playing at Grenoble Foot in Ligue 2. Surprised that Dallar hasn't tried to sign him with him being a, a French lad. But, you know what? For Oldham players, they're all around the world. We've got Africa, Australia, North America, and Europe. We just need one in Asia then it would completely fill it off this team. Sadly, there are none there. There's only one player from that team who is a free agent now. That's Johnny Zambotto. Get him signed. Um, he played every game except from the first round. He played, So that was against Kidderminster Harriers, where Osman Fane's team, but of course, Fane wasn't playing back then. But that's still... I think it's just a complete shame. He was at Dunferling, and his contract just ran out. So if Oldham needed a defender... He's magic, you know. 